There are some changes that I think are significant, particularly the rules about how cars have to be made. There's some uh, additional opening. If you're trying to sell milk into Canada, the deal's a little bit better. Um, there are provisions to try to keep uh, countries from devaluing their currencies to gain competitive advantage. There are some important tweaks. It is something that, when you look at it, that has included, that's never been included. Parts that we negotiated have never been included in any labor, uh, any trade agreement ever in the history of this country, ever. And that means that we're going to have uh, more confidence that this is actually going to benefit the American workers and it's going to create a level play, a l more level playing field between Mexico, the United States, and Canada. That has some really powerful provisions on all three of our principles. So it does permit the free flow of data, as I said. It does, uh, it does not require data localization in, as a condition. And it doesn't require you to give up your source code. In fact, it actually goes one step further, and it doesn't require you to give up your algorithms. So what they've tried to do in this deal is sort of force wages up by fiat, saying the more of the content in cars has to be made by high-wage uh, workers. Mexican labor standards have to be tougher in order to allow unions to organize. Some effort to really go after a problem that, interestingly, Democrats and the labor left have been complaining about for years. They they have been. Trump's real audience in this renegotiation is kind of trying to bring organized labor on board, which is sort of ironic for a Republican president. For American exports across the range of sectors, including our farming, manufacturing, and service industries. As part of our agreement, the United States will be able to lock in our market access to Canada and Mexico and greatly expand our agricultural export.